Okay, Malassan. Arguably the most complex and difficult fantasy series to read and understand. Malassan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson has gained an infamous status of not only being extremely dense and epic in scale, but also having a very dedicated fan base. I can assure you that people who love Malassan, they truly do love Malassan. Recommending the series almost became a meme a couple of years ago on Reddit since whenever someone asked uh, for recommendations on our fantasy subreddit, someone would always recommend Malassan and it almost became this running joke that apparently Malassan was the answer to every single recomm recommendation. So, as a fantasy enthusiast, I obviously have been very intrigued by the series. Not only is the series known for being very unique and people who manage to read the whole series, they usually become huge fans of this series and end up loving it. But first, if you want to skip to any of these sections, then I'll leave a timestamp in the comments down below. Also, secondly, a special thanks to my patrons who support my passion for books. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to this video. So, what exactly is Malazan Book of the Fallen? Well, that is arguably the most difficult question to answer in a single video, because, as Wikipedia states, Malazan is extremely complex with a wide scope and presents the narratives of a large cast of characters spanning thousands of years across multiple continents. Consequently, this series is not told in a linear fashion. Instead, you have several, and I mean a lot of storylines that progress simultaneously and you will see this story going back and forward in time and between characters and between location. This series gets extremely complex extremely quickly. Interestingly, Erickson himself has described the series as consisting of three major story arcs that at least initially seem to be like three totally different stories. This is a not a linear story where you follow a specific cast of characters over 10 books. This is more like three independent arcs or stories that are slowly intertwined later in the books, or so I've been told at least. So you will have one story in the first book, Gardens of the Moon, and then in the second book, Deadhouse Gates, you get a totally new story with new locations and new characters. Then in the third book, you return back to the story in Gardens of the Moon. And apparently in book five, you are again told a totally new story with new locations and with a new cast of characters. So what exactly is Malassan? Well, Malassan is not a typical linear story. In contrary, Malassan Book of the Fallen is very much a story about a world. And you as a reader, you get to observe what happens in this huge world over a long period of time, through the eyes of a very, very large cast. So that is my attempt at trying to answer the question, what is Malassan? I do acknowledge that I probably didn't do a perfect job though, but I've almost been dreading making this video because I really struggle with this series and I have been having a very difficult time summarizing my feelings about these books. But there are also some other reasons why I've been really hesitant about making this video. So why have I been putting off making this video? Well, firstly, I'm going to highlight and also criticize some aspects of this series that, I, that didn't work for me. However, how do you criticize something you truly don't understand? I already know that some of the points I will make will probably trigger some Malassans fans because I might be unclear about my point or misrepresent the series simply because I didn't really understand what I was reading when I was reading this series. So I will state now, please be kind in the comments. I'll try my very best to be very articulate in my words. Secondly, the Malassan fan base is incredibly dedicated and a lot of the smartest people in the fantasy book community love this series. For example, Philip Chase and A.P. Canavan, who both have PhDs in literature, have Malassan as their all-time favorite series. Philip Chase even rates this series higher than Tolkien in his personal estimation. Now, I am only a business management student and I do not have any fancy titles to strengthen my points, so I already feel like I'm in a weak position. Third and lastly, I've only read Gardens of the Moon and half of Dead House Gates. I mean, I read more than 1200 pages in this series, but this series is like more than 10,000 pages long, so I've actually only read 12% of the main series. And that is what I'm going to base my points off and criticism out of, which again, almost feels wrong. So here is what I'm going to do. 
I'm first and foremost going to highlight my experience reading the series and that will be the foundation for the whole video because I know at least that no one can say that my experience reading the series is wrong. Okay, enough talking. Let's jump into why my experience reading Malazan ended up in a disaster. Firstly, let's talk about expectation. People often talk about how readers get overwhelmed when they pick up Gardens of the Moon, which is the first book in the series. So after I heard that, I decided to do as much research as possible about what to expect when picking up this series. I must have watched hours of videos about this series where people either review the series or they talk about what you need to know about the series. And the more I watched these videos, the more intrigued I became. People say that this series has some of the best world building in the genre, which obviously sounds amazing. People also talk about how unique this series is, which again, sounds awesome. But people also mentioned that you will get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information thrown at you and how dense the writing style is, which was one of the main reasons why I actually didn't pick up the series initially. However, that all changed when Mike's book review announced a read-along of Malice and Book of the Fallen and I saw a lot of hype surrounding the series and I thought, if I should give this series a try, then now would be a great time. Consequently, I'd watch some of Philip Chase's videos about Malice and Book of the Fallen, where he strongly recommended just going with the flow when reading it. When Philip read this series, he tried to understand everything, which made the reading experience much more tiresome. So he just strongly recommended just trying to go with the flow and not let the confusion about what is going on stop you from reading these books. So that is what I wanted to do. So I started reading Gardens of the Moon and if you have read that book, then you will know that the first 30 pages or so, they are dense but they are not too crazy. Yes, you don't fully understand everything, but you feel you can easily hang on to the story. And I thought if this is the writing style for the series, then I would be okay. But oh, was I wrong. Gardens of the Moon very quickly goes from being complicated to being overwhelmingly complicated. In a matter of like 10 pages or maybe 20, I went from following the story to having no idea what was going on. And the reason for that is because Ericsson doesn't spoon feed you anything and that is intentional. Reading the series almost feels like starting on page 500 of an epic fantasy series and then it's up to you to try and catch up and piece together the story. Consequently, I found it incredibly difficult to just go with the flow of the story as Philip Chase recommended because you constantly feel like you missed something really important in the story and that is what annoyed me the most. I'm okay with confusion in my fantasy stories, but I constantly kept asking myself, should I understand this term by now? Should I know who this character is? I almost wish that there was an app out there where I could just look up, should I understand this by now? And I wish that app just told me yes or no, but I didn't want to Google anything because I was worried I would find spoilers. So I just kept reading and I just felt more and more confused the further I got into the story. But I found this amazing YouTuber, I've forgotten his name, but I'll leave his name here, who gave recaps of all the chapters in Gardens of the Moon. So I would read the book and then I would watch these recaps. But I ended up spending so much time watching these recaps and I just didn't think that was that much fun. I just wanted to read. I just, I didn't want to like study a book. And that brings me to the end of my first point. No matter how much preparation you do before you pick up this series, nothing can truly prepare yourself for Malassan. This series is like nothing I have ever read before and you just have to experience it for yourself to fully understand how overwhelming it is. I thought that I was prepared and had reasonable expectations going in, but I was still totally overwhelmed by the scale and the complexity of the story. And that leads me to the second point. Characterizations. Ericsson's characterizations are extremely interesting to say the least. Ericsson intentionally does not want to give the reader that the impression that this character is a good guy and this character is a bad guy. No, Ericsson didn't want to tell a typical good versus evil story in this series. In contrary, Ericsson goes to great length to truly highlight the complexity of war and how dividing something into evil and good is just too simplistic and basic. And I actually love that part of the series. Malison has a more realistic take on military warfare and conflicts than most other series because we don't have any pure evil characters and any pure good characters. 
at least not in the first book and a half. But by having more nuanced characterizations, it also becomes difficult for the reader to know who to root for, because Ericsson, he doesn't tell you who to root for. It's not like a new character is introduced and you know you should root for this character or you should hate this character. And while I appreciate what Ericsson is doing here, I also found it very challenging to connect with any of the characters because I really didn't know whom I should care for. Also, the amount of characters in these books is insane. There are so, so many characters that you don't really get enough time in the first book and a half with any of the characters to truly get attached to them. So that is my second point. I struggled with Ericsson's approach to characterizations. As with the first point, people love this series because of the complexity of the story and Ericsson's characterizations. Unfortunately, it was just way too much and overwhelming for me. And that leads me to the third and final point. Plot. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, Malison does not have a linear plot. The plot spans over multiple continents, yes, not countries, continents, and follows a huge cast of characters over a long period of time. While I have to praise Ericsson's world building and give him credit for actually having the audacity to write such a crazy story, this way of telling a story was just way too overwhelming for me. I appreciate when a fantasy story has an epic scale, but epic almost doesn't describe the plot in Malassan. This story is so, so, so massive. Everything is just epic in scale and Ericsson, he never holds your hand throughout these books. Yes, there are multiple plots in this series, but even just figuring out what the plot is, is challenging. So yes, I really struggled with how complex the plot was. So those are the three main reasons why my experience reading Malazan was a disaster. I was overwhelmed by the story and I struggled with Ericsson's characterizations and his way of narrating the plot. So where do I stand with Malazan today? Well, I haven't given up on this series just yet. I'm still intrigued by the world building and the story and I feel like I know better what to expect going into the series now. So. I might give this series another try someday. If I ever do get back to it, then I'll probably read it with somebody because I definitely think that that would be really helpful. So that is it. Have you read Malice and Book of the Fallen? Is the series on your TBR? If you're still watching, then leave a sword emoji in the comments down below. See you in the next video.